What is up? Welcome back to today's YouTube video. It is finally NASCAR Cup Series race day at Nashville Super Speedway. Happy Sunday everyone and happy NASCAR race day. Today we are going to Nashville Super Speedway once again today for the running of the Ally 400. I hope everyone's having an amazing Sunday because I'm having an amazing time being out here in the city of music. The biggest party of the summer is finally here. The Ally 400 is finally here. It's going to be a great day. 300 laps of racing today at Nashville. It is a sold out event today. Second time in three years. 2021 was the first one. This is the third annual NASCAR Cup Series race at Nashville Super Speedway. Get ready for a big race today. Get ready for the biggest party of the summer and get ready for the best vlog on this channel yet. Today is going to be a good one. We're gonna be going to driver interviews today. We're going to tweet up today to go meet Bob Pachris once again. And the NASCAR YouTube community is going to be there. So the YouTube gang, is finally here once again at Nashville Super Speedway and at another event. So we're gonna be seeing a lot of familiar faces today and a lot of new ones. And not just that too, there's more. Driver and Trials is finally here at Nashville Super Speedway, finally this weekend. Fans can finally go to Driver Intros this weekend as they were not allowed to go to them on Friday or Saturday. Man. I'm gonna not leave anything out on the table at Driver Intros today. It's gonna be fun. Now, with all that out of the way, let's get to the another part of the video, which is race day picks. This one though is gonna be a lot different because since it's Cup Series race day, we not we're not just only going to pick our suck pick of the week and then our underdog pick of the week, but this one is now different because we have now four picks for today for our guys who I think is going to win the day. So let's get into it. All right, starting off with the suck pick of the week. I have someone who has regressed the last two years with age, driving ability, and his equipment is no longer getting any better. I have someone who was supposed to retire at the end of 2022, but he ended up pulling a Tom Brady mid-season and calling off his retirement and decided to sign a two-year extension with his race team through 2024. He's yet again contemplating retirement at the end of this year, but I bet he's coming back in 2024. So my suck pick of the week is driver of the number 10 car, Eric Almarola, or as I'd like to call him, Eric Almaroli. and. Let's say the catchphrase of Eric Almirola. Almirola, Almirola, give me the ravioli. Sorry, Almirola fans. Your driver's just not getting any better this year. And it's gonna be another long second half of the year for you guys until Phoenix and potentially 2024. So hang in there. It'll eventually be over at some point for y'all. The next pick of the day is the underdog pick of the day. And for my underdog pick of the day, I have someone who is sitting 15th in the playoff picture, 20 plus points ahead of the cut line. He has performed so much better this season. He is in his sixth season in the NASCAR Cup Series. And could this finally be the year he finally makes the playoffs? I have someone who made it to the final round of qualifying yesterday he qualified ninth and it looked like he was gonna win the pole if his car did not spin out of the last turn. The fans cheered when he freaking spun. I was the only one in the grandstands that sat there in disgust watching all the fans just continue to show their, their immaturity and their disrespect to one great dude. And this dude gets hated on for the wrong reasons. One because of one stupid reason and one for one reason he was not involved in. Anyways, I have someone who I think will be a dark horse in the playoffs if he potentially makes it. 
So for my underdog pick of the week, I have driver for 2311 Racing, the franchise driver for the team. All right, I'm gonna get into it. I have driver of the number 23 car, Bubba Wallace as my underdog pick of the week. And we're gonna say my two nicknames for Bubba Wallace, Hubba Bubba and my favorite one, Bubba Wallace, B-R-U-H-B-B-A. For all the haters out there, if he wins, cry harder and I'm gonna cheer harder for him. Go get him, Bubba. Now, for the main event, we're going to go over my four picks of the day of who I think is going to win today's NASCAR Cup Series race at Nashville. Starting off with the first pick of the four, I have the dude I'm repping right now, driver of the number nine Napa Auto Parts Chevrolet, Chase Elliott, AKA Mickey Mouse. So far though, this year, it's been a dismal year for him. He's missed six races due to injury and one due to wrongful suspension. Man, it's been a tough year being a Chase Elliott fan. And when he was out for those seven races, I rooted for his teammate Kyle Larson and for Kyle Busch. Boy, he won this race, Chase Elliott won this race a year ago. He's gonna have another chance today, but he's gonna have to do it all the way outside of the top 10. And I believe he can go back to back in the city of music today. So I hope to see a whole sea of Chase Elliott fans out there in the grandstands and everywhere at the track. Get on your feet, cheer him on, and let's go shut the haters up. Now with the second pick of the four drivers, I have Chase Elliott's teammate and the king of NASCAR, the best driver in NASCAR, Chase Elliott's teammate, Kyle the King Larson. So far this year for him, it's been checkers or wreckers. When he's wrecking out of races this year, he is doing bad. But when he's not wrecking, he's winning. So far he has two wins this year. He's won both of his two races at short tracks at Richmond and Martinsville. Man, he won the inaugural NASCAR Cup Series race at Nashville in 2021, which was one of his 10 wins of his 2021 championship season. And that was the comeback season of the year, his return to the NASCAR Cup Series after a lost season in 2020, which we will not go over what happened. But if Chase Elliott can't get a win today, I want Kyle Larson to go get one today and potentially add to his chances of making the championship for this year. So for all the Kyle Larson fans out there, I hope to see y'all too. A whole sea of Kyle Larson fans out there like, like every week. So good luck today, Kyle Larson, and enjoy the race for the rest of his fans. Now for the third pick of four drivers for today's NASCAR Cup race at Nashville, I have someone who has three wins on the season so far. He is in revenge season mode after a dismal 2022 campaign which saw him only have one win and take a first round exit in the 2022 playoffs. I have someone who is who went from being the most hated driver in the NASCAR Cup Series to now being one of the most loved drivers. And boy, he won my respect over when he decided to turn away from the dark side to the light side again. He went from leaving the cheating Toyotas back to the American dream of Chevrolet. He is a two-time NASCAR Cup Series champion. He has 63 cup wins and is 13 wins away from tying Dale Earnhardt for wins. And he is potentially my pick to win the 2023 NASCAR championship this year. And he's so far my lock driver to make the championship for this year. All right, everyone's gonna love this one. For my third pick of the day, I have driver of the number eight, Cheddar Chevrolet, Kyle freaking Bush, KFB, Kyle freaking Bush, Kentucky Fried Bush, Kansas Fried Bush, call him whatever you want. I predict he will be one of the winners today. It's the summer of KFB once again, like it was in 2021 and 2000 and through 2015 to 2019. It's the summer of KFB once again in 2023. And if he wins today, you will definitely see me at Cheddar's on Monday eating free chicken tenders. So if 
Chase Elliott can't get a win today, then I want Kyle Busch or Kyle Larson winning. Probably Kyle Busch so I can get free chicken tenders. So for all the Kyle Busch fans, get ready for another big weekend and get ready for a hot guy summer. Sorry, no pun intended right there, sorry. <laughs> Anyways, that's my third pick of the day. Good luck Kyle Busch fans and go KFB. Now, for my fourth and final pick of the day, last but not least, I have someone who has won two NASCAR truck races at Nashville, both in 2021 and 2022, but he could not run this race on Friday night due to being a full-time cup driver. I have someone who drives for Stuart Haas Racing in the number 41 Haas Automation Ford. I met him earlier in the week on Broadway. And boy, everyone's always going to be spamming all the Stephen A. Smith memes. When I say this dude is winning today, I have been shouted it all week and I'm staying committed. Even though he's starting 25th today and I believe he can get it done today and pull off the upset of the year. Ladies and gentlemen, my prediction for who's going to win today, driver of the number 41 Haas Automation Ford, Ryan Priest. What? I said it. There you go. What? <laughs> really? And boy, let me just state out why I think he can do it today. He's a two-time truck winner here at Nashville. And I believe, yes, I believe everyone knows trucks are different than cup cars, but I believe he can make, make it work at the cup side. So, boy. I don't know if this one will be good or not, but let's, I'm hoping it does. So, go Ryan Priest. Good luck, and we'll see how this one ages. So yeah, those are my four picks of the day. I have Chase Elliott, AKA Mickey Mouse as my first pick, Kyle LaKeen Larson as my second pick, Kyle freaking Bush as my third pick, and Ryan Priest as my fourth pick. Those are my four picks of the day of who I believe could potentially win at Nashville Super Speedway today. But the one guy I said was obviously Ryan Priest, and that's what I'm sticking with. So yeah, we'll see how this ages, and we'll come back at the end of the day and see how it looks. And with all those picks out of the way, if you guys haven't already, make sure to drop a like on this video, subscribe, and turn on post notifications so you never miss a post. And don't forget to follow me on all my social medias. The link to all those will be in the descriptions below. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to the biggest party of the summer. It's going to be a good one today. It's going to be a hot one. We're going to crack up a couple cold ones today. It's going to be a big day like every other day. It's going to be fun today. Man, everyone sit back, enjoy the vlog, and I will see you guys at Nashville Super Speedway. Crowd here is pretty yeah, awesome. Late. We're just, on just time. right on time. All right, cool. Yeah, it's gonna be a, a fun day. I'm glad we're cruising at night. It is hot out, but uh, yeah, yesterday was pretty exciting watching the Xfinity race. It made me nervous watching all those guys spin out. I'm like, man, I hope it goes a little smoother tonight. But um, it's been a great weekend, fun crowd, and um, yeah, looking forward to today. Let's start there. We have a little bit of a drip. I don't know where that's coming from. Uh -huh. <laughs> Okay, let's let's start there because we saw some spins even in Cup Series practice and qualifying. Yeah. So, what are you thinking of this slick hot race track? Is it just folks trying to find grip? What's going on with the single car spins? Yeah, I think that you know last year this this track was pretty tricky too, and you know with it being as hot as it is, and it's just slick, and so you're right on the edge and. Uh, the, the bump going over the tunnel, um, if you're already kind of hung out a little bit, you hit that and it takes off. So, you know, yesterday, the Xfinity race, I felt like all that was magnified, right? It looked like really slick out there. Um, but tonight, you know, we're starting fairly late in the afternoon, um, so the track will be hot, but then it'll start to cool off as the sun goes down. So, I'm not exactly sure what we're going to have. I don't think it'll look exactly like that Xfinity race, but um, definitely tricky conditions yesterday in qualifying too. And what you guys are going to see today, you know, it's guys when they're digging for everything they've got, and the crews, and everybody's been working all year, and it all comes together. And um, it just, it is, it's a neat sport. It just proud to be a part of it.
We were talking about Nashville and, and just the memories you've had here at Nashville. We just did a Speedway Children's Charity Auction, auctioned off a piano you had signed four or five times with all your uh, success here. Uh, what's it like coming back here to Nashville? Super so Speedway? this place is hard. It's, um, I was telling my wife we're coming in, she's like, you love this place, right? And I'm like, no, I don't love it. It's, uh, no, I, I love the place. But the racetrack is hard. I can't tell you how many times I sat in the car about 30 laps in, I thought, oh, I'm in deep trouble. This thing won't do what I want it to do. And then we, we somehow always put it together. And I think that was a testament to my team, the cars I was in. And so, yeah, you know, um, knowing that, you know, we run all those races here, uh, that's one thing. We brought up Speedway Children's Charities. If you guys are looking for a charity to contribute to, Speedway Children's Charities is one of the best in the world. I was lucky enough to be a spokesperson for them for a while. I saw the one employee one time walking around with a stack of papers about two feet tall. So she's way overworked. They're not paying a bunch of people. And that money goes for a good cause. So thank you all for participating in that. Sunshine's good, huh? Yes. Sunshine and hot. I like yeah. hot. Do you? Yes. I, this has been something that we have talked about really all weekend. This is kind of the first. I mean, Gateway was hot. But this is like a different level of hot. We're racing right now. No. Yes. They're here. The fans are here. I don't know. How? Why are you guys? For the fans, because they they don't need to be out in the sun all day, but they're here, so we might as well be racing. I mean, I agree, but I like this cars to get super hot and the track to get slick. I think yesterday was a little chaotic, but other than that, uh, the track was slick and it looks fun. But how? What makes you guys good when it's so hot? I feel like everybody kind of turns it up a little bit when the temperatures go up. Well, the cars don't drive near as good as you know what they what you want them to. Uh, so you just got to improvise. And so, like, even on hot, slick days, like if you're leading the race, you're not really happy with your race car. Mm. Um, you're always going to complain about it, want it to do something better. Uh, so I, I don't know. To me, I think that's that's why we like it, and that's why we you know, push really hard for it. Hey, Bill. How are you? Good. Happy race day, officially. Yes, yeah, so excited about it. Let's go. You are. Yes. We had a nice off weekend. Now we're coming back. Um, how does it feel, first and foremost, to have practice and qualifying back? Yeah, that was uh, weird. It was fun. Yeah, yeah. I mean, to kind of get you know back in the rhythm of things and wanting to try some things out. So we thought it was good use for us. Okay, good. I saw the the co owner on the road, MJ. Just yeah, yeah, we uh, his presence you. being known yeah. intimidates me, but <laughs> it's really uh, nice. a, a team party there and uh, the both works on uh, on Friday night. So yeah, dude, that was amazing. The, the photos that came out of that and. I'm not saying Tyler Reddick is short, but uh, he's short. the photo of Tyler, Garth, and uh, I mean, that was just, yeah. that was really cool to see, so. And so what was that event like? Well, did you guys get a chance to hang out and just kind of chill and chat? Yeah, that was pretty much it. Uh, it was hosted by Michael's uh, uh, Tequila Brinks and Thoreau, so we went out there and had a nice musical act, and obviously Garth and those guys came out and uh, just hung out and really enjoyed the evening. Rolling out 30 cents in the number seven, Garner Trucking Chevrolet from Concord, North Carolina, Corey LaJoy! <laughs> Starting 35th in the number 78, Zygor Auto Group Chevrolet from Minamani Falls, Wisconsin, Josh Balicki! Seven race team Chevrolet from Welcome, North Carolina, Ty Dillon. Woo! 34, Love Sprint Guard 4 from Glendale, Arizona, it's Michael McDowell. Starting 15, Matt Door Systems Ford from the Woodlands, Texas, Brennan Poole. Woo! 31st in the number 21, Dex Imaging Ford from Huntersville, North Carolina, Harrison Burton. Number 42, Black Rifle Coffee Company Chevrolet from Las Vegas, Nevada, Noah Drexton. Starting 
29 from the number 51 Patriot Mobile 4. From Phoenix, Arizona, J.J. Yaley. Starting 28 in the number 47 Kroger Ballpark Fun Chevrolet. From Olive Branch, Mississippi, Ricky Stimhouse Jr. Off 27th in the number 38 Serial 1 E Bikes 4 from Cheryl's Ford, North Carolina, Todd Gilliland. Starting 26 in the number 3 Hunt Performance Fishing Chevrolet from Welcome, North Carolina, Austin Dillon. Starting 41, Morton Buildings Ford. From Berlin, Connecticut, Ryan Priest. Woo! Starting 24th in the number two, Snap On Ford. From Mooresville, North Carolina, Austin Sendridge. Third in the fame, number 43, Allegiant Chevrolet. From Byron, Michigan, Eric Jones. Woo! Starting 20, DeWalt Toyota. From Norman, Oklahoma, Christopher Bell. Woo! Starting 21st in the number 10, Smithfield Ford. From Tampa, Florida, Eric Alvarola. Woo! 20th in the number 6, Solomon Plumbing Ford. From Rochester Hills, Michigan, Brad Keselowski. Rolling off for 16 Celsius Chevrolet from Los Gatos, California. Yesterday's winner, AJ Allmendinger. Woo! 18th in the number 14, Mahindra Tractors 4 from Mitchell, Indiana. Give it up for Chase Briscoe. He starts 17th. In the number four, Bushlight Peach Ford from Bakersfield, California. He starts 16th in the number 54, Interstate Batteries Toyota from Charlotte, North Carolina. Ty Gibbs. Starting 15 Live Chevrolet from Tucson, Arizona, Alex Bowman. He rolls off 14th in his number nine, Napa Auto Park Chevrolet. Here we go, here we go, yeah! Oh the defending yeah. winner of the Allied 400, Chase Elliott. Let's go! Starting 13th in the number 24 from High Point, North Carolina, say hello to Ryan Blaney. Oh. 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 Prosper, Texas, Chris Busher. Woo! Oh. 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 11 in his number 8, Cheddar Scratch Kitchen Chevrolet. From Las Vegas, Nevada, Kyle Bush! All right, race fans, are you ready to meet the top 10 drivers for tonight's LI 400? Yes, sir! Starting 10th in his number 99, Tootsie Zorkis Lounge Chevrolet from Monterey, Mexico, Daniel Suarez. Starting 9th in the number 23, McDonald's Toyota from Mobile, Alabama, Papa Wallace. Starts in FedEx Ground Toyota 
from Chesterfield, Virginia, Denny Hamlin! And it's number five, HendrickCars.com Chevrolet. Yeah, To the number 19 Bass Pro Shops Toyota from Mayetta, New Jersey, Martin Truex Jr. Oh! 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 Rolling out for Liberty University Chevrolet from Charlotte, North Carolina, William Byron. And the number 22, Shell Pennzoil 4, from Middletown, Connecticut, Joey Logano! Oh! Oh! And number 31, Lee Filter Gutter Protection Chevrolet, from Winnemac, Indiana, Justin Haley! Driving the number 45, Big 615, Moneyline Toyota, from Corning, California, Tyler Reddit! Starting first, driving the number one, Worldwide Express Chevrolet, from Alba, Florida, Ron Chastain!
The next day. All right, it is the next day. So um, I hope you guys enjoyed those race clips, those driver interviews, and those driver introductions clips. So let's talk about Sunday. All right, so I arrived at the track at 10:30. It looked like it had rained when I arrived. It looked like the place was already like looked looked like it had rained when I arrived. I don't know. Because it wasn't raining where I was staying, so and plus I was staying in a different part of Nashville, wasn't staying in the same area. But yeah, it looked like it had rained. There was a chance of thunderstorms throughout the day, like throughout the early part of the day. There were the track was taking precautions with thunderstorms and letting fans in through the gates early to take cover in case thunderstorms came through or came through the area but it didn't so it went on it got sunny and hot throughout the day and it was just a hot afternoon i was melting like i was being cooked like a chicken in the oven it was the chicken the sun was the oven and the sunscreen was the butter <laughs> anyways let's talk about what i did so the first hour and 30 minutes was pretty boring i just walked around for the first hour and 30 minutes and then Noah Gregson held a meet and greet session at the Black Rifle Coffee Company booth. So I waited in that line. The long line was so long, like a line all the way out to the parking lot, basically. I waited in that line for about an hour, but it was all worth it because I got my picture. I got his little postcard and fun fact. I officially met Noah Gregson on the same day I met him in 2022. I met him on the exact same day in 2023, again, for the second time, June 25th, 2022 was the date. And now June 25th, 2023, I get a second picture with him. How ironic. I just realized that when I, when I took my picture <laughs> anyways. Um, yeah. And then for about the next hour and 45 minutes, it went back to being boring again. So uh, I walked around. I basically held down a lot of spots throughout the day to pass the time by. And then 145, Michael McDowell held a fan zone stage interview for 15 minutes. And it was a great one. Michael McDowell has a lot of fans, something I did not realize. Thought he had a small army of fans. But he actually has a pretty decent fan base, I guess, after his big Daytona 500 win in 2021. A lot of fans jumped onto his team into being his fans and to being his favorite driver. Anyways, yeah, I got my picture. Everyone wanted to get their autograph signed by him. And yeah, I got my picture and that was great. And then the next one was Eric Jones, driver of the number 43 car. The guy I'm actually representing right now. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, Eric Jones has some good fans too. Uh, yeah, it was great. He had a great day during the race. He had an eighth place day. Obviously, it's not going to be enough to get him in the playoff picture. He has to win to make the playoffs. But yeah, I got my picture with him. He's a nice dude. Great dude. And then after his interview ended, tweet up time. Tweet up though was pretty boring. I got to admit. I mean, I did get, was part of the big group picture at the end of the tweet up. And then at the end of the tweet, it just got so boring after everything ended. I didn't get my picture with Bob Pachris. I didn't meet, get pictures with any of the NASCAR YouTube gang. And then I left tweet up early to go see Carl Edwards' interview because he was there all weekend. He was being honored for his success in the Bush series and the truck series during the early parts from 2001 to 2011. Yeah, he was like an honorary starter, I think, during the weekend. Everyone went to his interview. Like, I literally bulldozed through a bunch of people to go get a good view of him. And then after his interview ended, and if y'all were wondering, no, he did not do a backflip off the stage. <laughs> yeah, I bulldozed through a lot of people out the way to go get my picture with him. Like, 
everyone wanted to get his autograph, get a picture. I bulldozed through a lot of people. I jumped in front of a golf cart to get to him. I got my picture. And boy, I was happy when I got it because who knows if I'll ever see him again at a racetrack. So great dude. And plus, and if you're wondering, does he plan to return to racing? Obviously not. He says if he does, he will give it 100%. But if he does return, in my opinion, he I predict he will for like a one-off part-time. I don't think he'll run a full-time career again, but maybe he'll run a couple one-offs. I think he would run with track house racing in the project 91 car because honestly there's a reason why they were track house fields the 99 car and it's such it's because they wanted to give it as a tribute to carl edwards so yeah man cousin carl that was a great interview man i love that interview and then after that the next interview was Kyle Petty and Kyle Busch at the Cheddar's fan zone stage. Obviously, I did not get a picture with Kyle Busch. Everyone wanted to get Kyle Busch, but I was, I tried to get his autograph because I have a three chi hat with me and I tried to get him to sign it in a gold Sharpie. So, but obviously fans were all on him and he dipped early and then I wanted to get Kyle Petty too. Honestly, I got Kyle Petty and yeah, everyone wanted his too. So yeah. I didn't just get him once. I got him not just once. I got him twice throughout the day. I was like Vince Carter. And when I said, I got one more in me when I got the second picture. <laughs> yeah. And then after that, went to go see Eric Almarola's fan zone interview. It was great. Honestly. <laughs> yeah. He has some what of a fan base, even though he's regressing throughout the year and throughout the late stage of his career. He's a great dude. And boy, interviews were crazy, man. I went three hours without drink, without drinking water, man. That was crazy. And boy, and as I say, don't let the size of my stomach and the size of my body fool you. There's many stuff you know I can do that you probably don't know. I'm in shape. I'm not like everyone out there this weekend drinking beer. I drink water all the time. I don't eat at the track. I'm in shape. I eat before I go and I eat after I'm done. I'm a very disciplined man when it comes to going to race tracks and sporting events with staying in shape and staying hydrated. So yeah. And then after that I ended, I went to the pre-race track access for driver intros. Man, I got a good view of driver intros. Man, it was such a great 15 minutes at driver intros, man. I lost my voice booing off Ty Gibbs and cheering on Chase Elliott, man. That was good. Man. Oh, that was great. And then after that ended, up to the grandstands to go watch the race. 300 laps. Let's talk about the race. The first stage was caution free. 90 laps in stage one were caution free. So from the beginning of the start of the green flag till the end of stage one, it was caution free. And then second stage, we had some two wrecks. Tyler Reddick lost a tire <laughs> off turn four and caused the caution. The next caution after that was Kyle Busch and Ryan Blaney got into each other. Kyle Busch came down on Ryan Blaney and Ryan Blaney hit a concrete wall and if you're wondering, <laughs> yes, Ryan Blaney is pretty banged up after that. I mean, he, he's okay. He walked away. He had a pretty hard hit because he didn't hit a safer barrier. He hit a concrete wall. And concrete walls are harder hits, hit harder than safer barriers. Because safer barriers, it reduces your speed when you hit the wall. Compared to a concrete wall, it just goes faster and it, it hurts more upon impact. And boy, yeah, I did touch a safer barrier during the whole week on Friday after the track. And boy, the safe barrier is steel in the little thing in between the little box. It's foam, it's foam. So yeah, now I realize, man, this is what it feels like to touch one. Anyways, yeah. After that, the rest of the race was meh, kinda. I mean, the race was between Ross Chastain, Martin Truex Jr., Denny Hamlin, and William Byron throughout the day. Not many passing for the lead, to be honest. I mean, the two best cars all day were Ross Chastain and Martin Truex Jr. Those two dominated the end of the race. Chastain went on the 
Man, hold off Truex at the end. The whole stage three was caution free, man. The beginning of stage three went caution free till the end, man, of the race, man. Man, Kevin Harvick had a good day. He had a fast car on the long runs. I thought he could win the race, man. Man, he had a flat tire and that ruined his whole day, man. Man, he was whooping everyone and he's carrying SHR on his back. He's gonna need back surgery after this season when he's done after 2023. After carrying this team for the last, what, since 2019. Yeah, I'll pay for his back surgery if he needs it. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, Ross Chastain got a lot of juice in post-race. And boy, yeah, he did his watermelon smash. Man, I cheered him on. I called him throughout the day the next Dale Earnhardt. I'm the one that started that trend. It started to catch on as the year went on this year. In July 2022, I started the trend after Atlanta when he wrecked a bunch of drivers during the race. And I had tweeted out, he's the next Dale Earnhardt. <laughs> and boy, it caught on. Yet no one's crediting me for it. But I did start it, so yes. And people are gonna say, he has only three wins now. I'm like, so what? He races like Dale Earnhardt. And boy, if you don't like it, here's a, I'm not gonna give you the middle finger, but here's a little F you to you if you don't like it. And your little driver if you don't like it. If he were to wreck Chase Elliott, I would still enjoy it, to be honest, because he's such a great dude. He's a watermelon farmer from Florida. Great driver. He doesn't get as much appreciation as he should get. He does a lot for our sport, man. He's a great person overall. Great driver. And boy, great win, Chastain. Anyways, and then I left the track. I didn't get back to the room until 11. And as I got back... I did order food to the room, and then after that, I passed out, and yeah, woke up. What? And then, yeah, that was it. So that's how my day went, and everyone's wondering now, what's next for me? Well, I do have one more race weekend in me, but it's not any time for the rest of summer. It's not any time soon. In fact, it's... The last one of the year. Yeah, you know what I'm about to say. We're going to Phoenix in November for championship weekend. We're gonna see a champion crown in the truck series, the Xfinity series, and the cup series. And we will be there for Kevin Harvick's last ride. We will do something for Harvick though at Phoenix. Like, I will honor him some way in the Sunday race. I will wear a hat, may possibly go all out for him at Phoenix. He's a great dude, honestly. And yeah, Nashville did honor him by, in turn four, spraying something on the safer barrier saying Harvick, hashtag forever, as that's his like farewell tour name, the forever retirement tour. Yeah, so you will see me in Phoenix. It's gonna be a great one. Turn your notifications on. We're gonna have a lot of fun in November. And boy, it's gonna be a fun one. We'll see if my boy Chase Elliott can make the playoffs and potentially make the Final Four. And we'll see who makes it to the championship for November. So yeah. And next up now is the photo slideshow. So enjoy this one. And I will see you guys at the end of the photo slideshow. Oh, and I forgot to mention my driver picks. Chase Elliott finished fourth. Kyle Larson fifth. Kyle Busch ninth. And Ryan Priest sixteenth. Yeah, I just kind of had to put that in there since I didn't include it in the 13 minutes. Anyways, on to the photo slideshow now. Enjoy it, guys.
I hope you guys enjoyed that photo slideshow of my day at the track. And with that, that'll be the end of the video. Thank you guys so much for watching. It was a great weekend. Had a lot of fun. Boy, I can't believe it's over. And we're on to our next adventure in November at Phoenix. And it will 100% happen about that. I already got my ticket. We already got our infield pass. Forgot to put that in there. Anyways, it's going to be a great one. We'll see who makes the championship four. We'll be there for Harvick's last ride, whether he makes it to the final four or not. We'll see. And we'll see if Chase Elliott makes the playoffs and potentially the final and the final four. So yeah, enjoy the second half of the season, guys. And I will see you guys next time. Thank you.